Hi, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you how to hide and unhide rows using either buttons or drop down menus when you're modeling real estate, right? So an example of where I use this, and you'll find this in, in many of my models, but one example is in my apartment development model. I have the option to turn on or off a permanent debt module. And that module is hidden behind some rows and when the module is toggled off, here it says no perm debt, then rows you'll see here 72 through 76 are hidden. But if we click the perm debt button, those rows become available or they unhide, right? And you'll see that like so. And I use that, I guess, in several areas within this model. Another one would be including retail, right? So um, row 104 is hidden here. We click the include retail that unhides that and it also opens a tab called retail income. So if I come back here, we'll see now row 104 is revealed and there's also a row down here, retail leasing cost reserves that becomes available. If we turn off the retail, then it hides those rows and it also happens to hide the uh, tab. And I'll, I'll, I'll link to the VBA code I use to hide that tab. You can also find the VBA code in any of my models simply by going to the developer ribbon, clicking Visual Basic, and here under modules, you're gonna find all of the code that I use for these various uh, uh, elements. So, and I, and I do my best, like for instance, here's the perm debt activate, and you can see the code that I use uh, to activate that code, uh, or to activate that module. Um, so let me show you just quickly how to do this yourself. I open up a, a brand new workbook uh, the first thing we need to do is save this as a macro enabled workbook. If we don't, then we can't uh, uh, add this logic. So I go ahead and I click save as. I get here to the save as dialog box. I come down and I choose Excel workbook macro enabled workbook and hit save. Okay, so now I now have a macro enabled workbook. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll add a second Worksheet here at the bottom. I have worksheet one. I'm going to rename this uh, just so we can differentiate. Drop down, and then the other workbook I'll rename button. All right. So these are the two uh, methods I'm going to show you. Now there's a lot of other ways that you can you can do this, but I'm going to show you two methods that I commonly use in my models. So let's start with this drop down method. The logic here is there will be a drop down menu, and when you toggle between the two options in that drop-down menu, the rows, or you could use columns as well, will automatically hide or unhide. And so here in B2, I'm going to uh, hit Alt-A-V-V, which re reveals the data validation. You can also just go to the data ribbon here, uh, come over to data validation, data validation, and we're gonna choose a list. And in that list, we'll have Two options, hide or comma, show, okay? And you'll see now we have a drop down menu. I'll turn this blue uh, because this is an input. And we can now toggle between hide and show. And what we'll, we want is we want row five. I'm just gonna turn row five blue like so. When we go show, we toggle B2 to show, row five will be, will be shown. When we toggle this to hide, row five will hide. And this code is actually, um, it's called a private sub and it's within the worksheet itself. It's not a separate macro. And to access that code, we come down to the tab, this drop down, we right click and we select view code. And this is gonna open our visual basic uh, window. And here off to the left, what we're gonna see is uh, first off, we have various workbooks open at the same time. And so we have the apartment development model. I have that worksheet open, right? Because I just showed that to you. Um, and then I have here book three. This is the worksheet or this is the workbook that we're working in. And I go sheet one drop down. And within here, we have this area where we can drop in code. And I'll, I'll show this code to you when, uh, or I'll include a a text file with this code so you can grab it. So here, here we have the code in a text file and I'll go ahead and include a link to download this text file in the blog post uh, for this tutorial. 
And here I, I broke this into two sections. I have the code for the buttons and then I have the code here for our drop down menu, right? So this is that private sub. Let's just go ahead and copy this code from the text file. And we're going to paste it again. We select the sheet and then we paste it here. And what this says is first, this is a private sub. So this code only runs when you are, you are in this worksheet and it asks if the range B2 is equal to show, then rows five through five, that entire row, is it going to be hidden? The answer is false. So it's not hidden or in other words, it's, it's shown. Now else if range B2 is equal to hide, then rows five through five are hidden, the, the response is true. And so that this is the basic code that I use in this case. I go ahead and close our VBA window. And then now as we come here and we hit hide, it hides that row. And then we hit show and it shows that row. Um, hide. And it takes a second because I have uh, my apartment development model open actually. Let me close that and you'll see here. Now with that apartment development model, it moves much faster, right? That's because that apartment development model had quite a few macros in there that, that it's looking at. And so that's hiding and unhiding rows using a drop down menu. Now let's look at buttons and buttons are my preference. And the reason is, is every time you, when you're using a private sub like this in a worksheet, anytime you make a change in that worksheet, it's going to automatically run that code. And uh, depending on the amount of code you have, it can it can slow down the your your workbook um, and make for a less optimal experience. So I prefer buttons. And so we we'll come here. Let's just first drop in some bo buttons. I come to insert. I choose a shape, and these shapes then become our buttons. And we'll make a button about that size. Let's label this as hide, and then come here center. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy this. Oops. Control C, Control V, and put it about right there. And this one will be show. And then let's just change the color of the the shape here to maybe that right there. Okay, and that way we have a. Uh, a distinction between our two buttons. And then when, so when we click hide, it will hide row five. When we click show, it will show row, row five. Again, we're going to come back to our VBA. Now this time we're going to create two macros. I'm the developer, visual basic. And to create a macro, uh, we just need to be really anywhere within our workbook on the left here. And then we come up to insert. We're going to insert a module. Okay, a module is a macro. And these are, these are just regular subs, okay? And if we come back to our uh, code, I have two macros. The first is this one here. And all it does here is you'll see, it's called hide. And when this macro runs, it just simply, in this case, hides row five. It says row five, is the entire row hidden? True. And then we can just copy this or let's just go back to our, our text file. Let's grab the second one. And this sub, this macro is called show. And it, it to make sure that row five is not hidden. All right, with those two macros recorded, or not recorded, but, but written, I'm gonna just go ahead and save our workbook again, close out our VBA window. And then we'll come up here, actually, let's take five and let's highlight this so we can, we can see it well. You're going to click on the shape and then right click and come down and assign a macro. And we're going to assign hide to be called hide. And we're going to assign show to show. And now when we click this shape, it will run that macro. Click hide, hides the row, click show shows the row. But anytime we make changes on this workbook, it won't run those macros unless or until 
that button is clicked or that button. And so that's hiding and showing rows using VBA in Excel. Uh, again, this is something I use in real estate financial modeling quite often. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on this. Uh, otherwise, thank you for your time. Thank you.